boat work. Always boat work. In this exotic tropical paradise. Boat work is a flat circle in this hypersphere universe. These are the tools that I use every day. I mean like non-electric, not needing to be plugged in, not needing batteries to recharge specifically. I have to start with our deconstruction tools. So we have the hammer and mallet to destroy. I have a locking set of pliers, can be tightened or loosened and then locked into place for gripping those stripped screws or bolt heads, locking down and pulling out. We've done a lot of that on the boat and it's a little partner, the adjustable wrench that also locks down. Adjustable wrenches often have the drawback of slipping and loosening themselves up while you're working and jiggling. That's where the, the lock really helps. Our ratchet tool with a sort of universal bit on it. We actually used to have a smaller version of this bit and that one actually already got destroyed. These uh, pieces got stuck down somehow. We used to have a ratchet set with different bits and basically all the bits get lost and go everywhere. So the universal type is really nice, even though our experience is that it broke. Measuring tape, which is both metric and imperial measurement. This really applies to all of our tools, really will have a um, metric and imperial version because you'll never know what in the boat is going to be metric and what is imperial depending on where your boat is from, whether it's from Europe or from or built in the US for example. And we have our set of pliers specifically for electrical work. Shearing part that allows you to chop your wires and the sizing here for wires that allows you to strip wires completely. But wait, there's more. Our many pieced screwdriver set. We basically have screwdrivers of the Phillips head type and screwdrivers of the flat headed kind. I also have some of the different kinds of bits, star heads and Robertson or square type heads for the type of screwdrivers that you can replace the bits on them. That's really useful to have around. You never know when some sort of device is going to want some sort of obscure bit on your screwdriver end. And I use mostly for my bicycle, but also useful in the boat is are the Allen key sets. Very important screwdriver set. I don't know if this counts as electric or not, or hand tool, but we had recently sent to us an electric caliper which is quite useful compared to the non-functioning caliper that we used to have. This really allows us to get precise measurements of the insides and outsides of objects. We have our old, old, well, not really old, but our already rusty <laughs> filing set. Files are something we use on a daily basis for any metal object. These tools aren't stainless steel, as you can see. A lot of our tools are already rusty after several weeks and months. Our lovely chisel set, you'll see us destroying a lot of items on the boat, a lot of wood and fiberglass with our chisel and hammer. And uh, you can see we've already destroyed a couple of our punches. Very important, our hand wrenches. What also works really well are adjustable wrenches, of course, but we have this set of non-adjustable wrenches for all those other tasks that require not stripping bolt heads, not stripping screw heads. And all these tools were sent to us in one way or another by our wonderful patrons. Thank you. Meanwhile, we were sorting out engine parts that I brought back home with me from Annapolis. A heat exchanger and a hand crank so that in emergencies, our Volvo MD2B can be started manually. Here, on top of everything. Down there to the pump. That should be decompressed one, and that should be. It should turn smoothly, but it, it it's still under pressure. Ugh. I guess one of them always stays a bit 
compress so it starts to I guess it doesn't completely decompress the engine. <laughs> we were hoping that this would all mean that the engine puzzle was coming to an end. But it wasn't going to be so simple. Got a problem here. Robbie removed the original water pump from the engine. It, you can see it's a single impeller that fits in there that originally used to just run coolant through the engine and the coolant system would go into the keel of the boat that the engine was originally in. The coolant is of course better to run through your engine than salt water. So now courtesy of our viewers Terry and Curtis who sent me this double water pump when I was in Annapolis. Now we could run coolant through the closer pump to the engine and then we could run seawater through the second pump and it would go into the heat exchanger and, and cool the, the, the coolant. But we've got a problem. These two, these two attachment points are not the same, as you can see. There's a smaller circle and a larger circle. Our original pump is the smaller circle this new dual pump or what's the word for the dual pump? tandem pump no it's called a po it's called a dual it's called a double pocket water pump yeah double pocket pump system for piggyback does not fit our engine as you can see we looked at the system for a while trying to figure out if we could for example piggyback um if we could perhaps piggyback the two water pumps on each other. Uh, I don't think it's possible. Well, he doesn't think it's possible. I don't know if it would be possible to get the machine shop maybe to bring this key down to size and make a, a little key attachment point in here. Uh, we don't know. That's not looking good. The tailpipe or the exhaust elbow fit on nicely though. We temporarily lost the key for fitting on our emergency tiller, so I shaped one out of stainless scrap. We were being tested by this newly simplified steering system. We had removed the leaky hydraulic system, but the emergency tiller was not in very good shape to steer the boat either. Okay, there's the key. It sits in there. And you can drop that. But how do I know where the key... That's what I'm going to find out. The bottom portion was just rusted to shit. I mean, when you wobble it, it goes down. Luckily, our new friends at the local metal shop welded on a new stainless steel portion just at the bottom so that we would be able to steer with confidence. It was about one millimeter too tight though. So we have to sand it a little bit. It's like less than a mil, but we gotta sand it. I'm gonna penetrate this pipe straight like this and just rotate. Just keep rotating. Like that? Yeah. So we sanded off just a teeny bit of the male and female components. Voila! Hi! We also needed at least a temporary collar for the top portion of it to make it all secure. 
with our last units of shore power, we sanded one last time before we were going to have to leave this dock. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we were going to have to sail away suddenly. We were being renovicted. So it was time to make sure that all the sails were in shape. We decided to add Hanks to our originally furling headsail. We hauled the heavy sail up to Tony's loft and measured out 12 spots for the Hanks. That usually comes as a set? Sometimes. What the, makes the hole? This is a hole punch. It's just uh, also used in leather and sail making and this is a, is a ring, ring press. Meal underneath it. Another business item to be taken care of before leaving was our failure that is Desesperado. The proa that we simply could not afford to work on alongside our sailboat. Luckily our friends came to pick up Desesperado and bring the canoe up to their place where they would continue on with the project. There's some Polynesian flying prow here. Flying? They have a lovely, squirmy, sholo, it's squintly Mayan hairless dog. <laughs> Who was unfortunately being eaten by mosquitoes. <laughs> Everybody's a pest, eh? Choco's trying to hump. Mosquitoes trying to bite. A ver si alguien nos da calaverita unos tamales. Even Choco could not believe that the proa was going, and that we would be finally going as well. It looked like we were going to have to sail engineless, without an anchor and chain, to Isla Mujeres, against the strong northerlies. But in the meantime, we were also searching for another dock here in Puerto, the problem was, is everyone wanted double, triple, quadruple, or more than what we had just been paying. Real estate is booming, prices are rising, but the amount that we make has not been following that trend. Truly, the very last second, we had an offer for a spot without a dock, without power, without access to fresh water, for only 30% more than what we had been paying. This sounded better to us than possibly losing our boat out on the rocks, because it's quite dangerous to sail around here without any sort of auxiliary propulsion, and tying up next to the quiet, calm jungle would be a treat compared to the high traffic spot that we had just inhabited. We bought some more time, but we still had work to do to escape the Puerto Aventuras Canal. It only took about three months to get this new coupler shipped out here. It looks a heck of a lot more intense than the last coupler. There was a little bit of drama pushing our shaft out in order to fit the new coupler on. We explored the interesting spot that we had just moved to. The water is clean and crystal clear most of the time in this part of the canal. This is probably due to less marine traffic kicking up particulate in the water and less runoff from construction and houses. 
you will notice that the mixing of fresh water welling up from the rock and salt water coming in from the ocean makes for intermittently blurry imagery. The more that we swim and stir up the water, the blurrier it can become. There are noticeably less fish who hang out in the upper freshwater layer. The saltwater fish that we usually see further out into the ocean can survive here for a couple of minutes. They tend to come around and leave quickly, though. While we finally had proper attachment of the shaft to the engine by getting a new coupler, we discovered in the process that the cutlass bearing, which holds the propeller shaft snugly into place within the strut, was basically non-existent. This was a source of terrible noise and vibration, the last time that we ever ran an engine on this boat. Just another part that we would have to replace now. The quiet jungle lifestyle didn't last much longer than a week. A construction crew arrived and began demolishing the trees surrounding our spot. I'm not gonna lie, it's disheartening to live next to a demolition zone of trees while living in a construction zone of a boat, and so we continued on getting the boat sailing. Robbie lashed the hanks onto the formerly furling sail. And just like that, we had a second head sail. having toilet troubles again. Tying up right next to a limestone wall underwater means that we are constantly sucking up tiny little fish through the raw water intake of our toilet. A raw water filter is important for all pump systems on a boat, especially critical systems such as an engine, but we found in this case the head could also use one too. Great. This hose is really small. The tubing was a little small for the filter attachments, but no worries, it just meant boiling up a pot of water and sticking the ends of the pipe in before slipping them on. had the pleasure of having some visits from friends and patrons recently here in Mexico. Thank you to everyone who has supported the making of these videos, happy holidays, and we would not have arrived into this new year without you. Mm -hmm.